Hey, welcome back to Zombie Tactics today with another installment in the Gun Fu series. Uh, you may have read the title and said, that doesn't really sound like the Gun Fu series. And to some extent, you're right, because we're going to talk precious little about guns, but we are going to talk about training, particularly training in a uh, defensive kind of a situation, which is part of what the Gun Fu series is all about. And uh, we're going to discuss defensive medicine, though. Specifically, we're going to discuss a course I took with a company called NorCal MedTech down in the Bay Area of California. Uh, but I'm going to also talk a little bit about generally about the importance of defensive medicine training. Now, now, what's defensive medicine training? Well, it's pretty much being able to deal with the kind of things that you're likely to encounter should you have to be involved in some kind of an emergency situation. Uh, maybe you've defended yourself with a weapon or someone else. Maybe you've come upon a scene where someone else has employed a firearm and you need to render aid. It could be something like an automobile accident, although that's a little bit more outside of the scope of this kind of training. It, it could apply nonetheless, though, because sometimes similar kinds of wounds and similar kinds of care are required. So that's defensive medicine or tactical medicine. And most of the, the, the fairly forward-looking um, firearms training facilities and schools have adopted some kind of defensive uh, medicine training or they have that as a part of their catalog of courses that they could order. I, uh, I'm a somewhat embarrassed to admit that I'm probably like a lot of people my age and maybe a lot like some of you in my viewing audience as well in that I was a Cub Scout, I was a Weevilo, I was a Boy Scout, I participated in a lot of stuff through my church where I had some kind of um, what I would call first aid training and so you know I thought I knew what a tourniquet was for and when to use it, what a bandage was for, you know a compression bandage, what, what that was for and when to use it and all this other kind of stuff um, but I, I kind of always in the back of my head kind of realized that maybe I didn't understand that subject as well as I should uh, that became immediately apparent that when I began taking this class from NorCal MedTech, uh, Defensive Medicine 101. Uh, my instructor, Brandon, is a working EMT. He not only works in a, I guess what you'd call an, uh, a high incident area of Northern California, so he gets a lot of practice with this kind of thing, uh, but he's also been the kind of guy who's been called on to work national emergencies like Katrina and other disasters. So you're getting the real deal from somebody who does this for a living daily if you're taking this class from NorCal MedTech. And I thought that was something really important. Particularly it was important for uh, a couple things I want to talk about here. One of them being that this class wasn't just the typical defensive medicine class. I've seen classes like this before where it's simply, well, here's how to put on a tourniquet. Here's how to put on a compression bandage. Here's how to use some sea locks, pour that in there, stick a tube down their nose and a needle in their chest for decompression. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. And that's about all that class was about. And at maybe three, four hours long. This was a full eight hours long. And then an additional module that I'll talk about later in this review uh, that was an hour long. So a full day uh, of training here uh, of tremendous value, I'll say that. Well, what was this defensive medicine class all about? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go over this by looking at the course outline here. The... Um, the part that you get about almost everybody else's course would be the following. Skills necessary to stop violent force trauma from killing somebody. That would be the entire course you'd get from a lot of other companies. In addition to that, this course included the following topics and subjects. Understanding the physiology associated with these kinds of wounds and violent force trauma. Ballistics and how that relates to how we might have to offer care to somebody. Um, how to assess these injuries so that you know what to do, how to employ these particular skills. That was an important part of the class. And like I said, the skills necessary to do some of these things, putting on the tourniquet and when, putting on the compression bandage and the tube down the nose and the needle on the chest and all that kind of thing. And we also did modules concerning the tactical considerations during these kinds of uh, medical scenarios. In addition to that, there was, uh, we had received some briefing on pepper spray technology and how that enters into the mix, tasers, how to put together a blowout kit, or what some people would call a ventilated operator kit. They have their own kit they sell, by the way, at, at NorCal MedTech, which is a pretty doggone kit. You might want to check out the website. It'll be uh, noted in the uh, video comments below. So a much more complete course than many classes uh, will be when you take them from another company. Not to say anything against anybody, just to say that this one is particularly good for that reason, for its completeness. So we went into all of these topics. And uh, 
you know, pretty much it was, it, we, we, we went right into the, the, whole, the first goal, understanding the physiology associated with it. So I'm going to the, the, the course note, notes here, and, and we went over, of course, the big three things that are likely to be involved in treating. Uh, hemorrhaging of some kind, which is bleeding, to put it, you know, bluntly. Tension pneumothorax, which is a kind of chest injury that you can get where your lungs are causing other parts of your body, your, your airway to be closed off because of pressures that are building up, things like that, and airway blockage. So those are the three main things that we considered that we might be able to do something about as citizens. We went into anatomy and physiology, uh, you know, how the blood, how the circulatory system works, how the respiratory system works. We got to know how these things work if we're going to deal with, with uh, things that might be affecting them. Um, we went about how to recognize certain kinds of symptoms that would indicate that we'd have to render uh, care of a certain kind. Uh, the natures of shock, the nature of shock, and how that can kill somebody, even though uh, the primary wound is has been fixed, and why it's important to do things like uh, like look for signs of that shock, and some pretty interesting things. I'm not going to tell you what they are, but some pretty th interesting things that I know you're probably not going to get from other courses about how to save a life. Uh, having to do with shock. You may have treated that, that gunshot wound and everything looks okay with that and they're not bleeding. They go into shock and they die anyway. Uh, you want to know how to do something about that as well. So take this course if you want to learn that kind of information. Um, lots of information about what kind of blood loss is required to send a person into shock or to, send, uh, to, to render them unconscious, to kill them, uh, how to treat it. Uh, we went into a subject that I've never heard anybody in any other course outline for a defensive medicine class uh, talk about, and that is called autotransfusion or field expedient autotransfusion and how to perhaps do that. Uh, a lot of interesting information out there. I know I'm kind of teasing this, but this is, this is kind of both a review, but I'm, I want to encourage you to take this class. If you don't have this kind of stuff in your noggin or in your skill set, you really need it. Uh, we went into the respiratory system, the kinds of things that are likely to be affecting that. Uh, loss of blood, loss of airway, impedance of the heart, all of these kinds of things. We went into the defensive medicine environment. What is, what's going to be going on around you? How to pay attention to what's going on so that uh, you know how those kinds of things are going to impact your care. The idea like, you know, EMT is probably on the way, but they're not going to be there for 20 minutes because the way uh, that the police department and other authorities have to uh, handle securing the scene of a crime and that kind of thing. Uh, really important to know that. Um, Lots of information, lots of good stuff about how to, how to recognize the kind of wounds that uh, somebody might have and the kinds of symptoms that they're presenting and, and how that indicates you, you might have to, um, have to uh, proceed. We did actually go into a section on wound ballistics, which I thought was interesting for a class on defensive medicine. Uh, and, and I thought that that was interesting because it was approached from the standpoint of a medical professional Obviously, we're not medical professionals, but an EMT can be considered that. And how they look at, at uh, wound ballistics and things like that. Um, let's see what else. Moving through the, uh, the the course notes here, just to kind of refresh my memory. Of course, we did all that kind of stuff about tourniquets and pressure bandages and everything like that. But what we did that I thought was in, uh, incredible value was we didn't just say, "Here's a tourniquet. Here's how you slap it on," but Here's why tourniquets are treated in a different fashion now than they may have been back when I took that, um, that Cub, Stout, Cub Scout Weebolo training when I was younger, or maybe some of the basic first aid training that you've received. A lot of information that EMTs are putting to use in the field that's pretty current, you want to be up to date on these things because this is the way that you're going to save a life. I talked about that one hour part at the end. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that in a second too because of some changes there. Um, not only how to put on a tourniquet, but here's the base. Here are all the different kinds of tourniquets there are, and where you might use them, and what the advantages were and the disadvantages, and then you get to try them out yourself, so you can kind of come to your own decision about what you want to use. The same thing with various kinds of compression bandages. Uh, we went over a section on the various hemostatic agents, C-locks, quick clot, things like that, both where those things are used and how that technology has changed over the past few years to make it superior and you don't have all the kinds of problems that you had with maybe some of the earlier versions of that. We did a section on packing wounds with gauze, whether it's a, a treated gauze with a hemostatic agent or whether it's just standard good old gauze. We used a side of beef for that, which I thought was kind of an interesting way to get some experience without having to work on a real human being. We went on to using a, um, a rack of ribs as a simulated rib cage 
to get us a little bit of experience uh, in uh, working with tension pneumothorax and inserting a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a catheter, a needle and a catheter to relieve pressure for that kind of wound. We did practice with a nasal pharyngeal airway using a training dummy, a tackle dummy, whatever you want to call it, and there will be a picture of that here. Um, and so we went through all the major kinds of things that you might do practice them a lot, practice them with different pieces of gear so that we would get an idea of like what are the different kinds of things that are out there available for us and what we might choose for our own personal um, you know blowout kit or whatever. By the way defensive uh, NorCal, Din NorCal, NorCal MedTech does in fact have their own um, their own blowout kit. I'll put a link in the uh, the, the channel comments there, the video comments there below. You can go to their website and you can check that out. It's a pretty doggone good complete kit and has just about everything you'd want for this kind of thing. It's not a bad deal at all for that matter. Uh, and when, when you kind of wrap it all up together, all of this stuff comes together and you get the information not only what to do, but why and when to do it and what kinds of challenges you're likely to encounter, as well as a lot of information designed to allow you to reach your own kind of decisions about how you're going to put together your own kit, uh, that kind of thing. Now, after all this was said and done, eight hours of instruction, not a minute wasted, I'll say that, jam-packed full of information and examples and opportunities to try things and test them out and work with them and you know see what works and what doesn't. At the end of that, there was an opportunity to go through a CP, an adult CPR and uh, automated electronic defibrillator court portion as well. So kind of a bonus. And we went through there again new information, new information about how CPR is being rendered in the field now, compression only. Uh, CPR is becoming kind of the rule of the day because that is showing superior results out in the field compared to the old kind of, you know, compress so many times, <laughs> breathe so many times method that they were using before. And again, not only why, not only what you're going to do, what's the latest information, but why this is the case. You know, you want to know what to do, you want to know why to do it. That helps it stick in the old noggin there. And then we used a training device, kind of looked like a play school radio, a training device designed to simulate the use of an automated electronic defibrillator so that if someone was in some kind of, uh, you know, fibrillated condition with their heart, you could use that device to potentially shock their heart back into operating correctly. Uh, so kind of a bonus there, and you received that. I, I understand Brandon said you're going to continue to have that as a, available to you as a kind of an add-on uh, freebie or, or adjunct to the course, uh, at least for the time being. That's the plan to offer this as well. So you can get a, a certification for adult CPR and AED, which is a, a bonus for sure and something that's not included in most courses of this kind. So all in all, kind of the takeaways from this are, if you're serious at all about firearms training, you ought to be equally serious about getting some kind of defensive medicine or tactical medicine or self-defense medicine class. NorCal MedCat more, I'm going to get it right. NorCal MedTech has an excellent program from both the class that I took as well as the outline that I've reviewed both from them and other companies. I will say that it looks like one of the best possible courses that you can take and one of the best values for your money. So if you're anywhere in the Northern California area, if it's a three-hour drive like it was for me, definitely worth the, worth the three hours or even longer good company, good people, and you're getting information straight from somebody who's using this stuff in the field all the time professionally. Although it's not strictly gun related or gun training, defensive medicine, tactical medicine, self-defensive medicine, that kind of thing, call it what you will, is an important part of your self-defense profile and your training to learn to deal with self-defense situations. And uh, NorCal MedTech is a great place to start your journey. Uh, that's Zombie Tactics for today. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.